Winston yep. Ma, professor of NYU and the author of a brand new book, The Digital War and the China's Mobile Economy that's coming out uh, fresh uh, in early 2021. So go check it out. But we're going to have a chat about uh, China's amazing space of this uh, digital transformation. Was that you uh, describe it as 5G, I, A, B, C, D. It sounds like a bunch of uh, nuclear codes to me. What are they? Oh, thank you. Uh, internet uh, of internet or everything, that's the I. And ABCD means artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing, and data analytics, 5G, IABCD. It's uh, interesting. So, so give us a scorecard. How does China compare to the United States in these uh, five areas? 5G, we know, particularly yes. IABCD. I, I would say China is way ahead, at least in terms of the commitment in investing and promoting such developments in these new areas, right? So, so first of all, uh, if we look at the COVID stimulus, the, the US is still thinking about traditional infrastructure, but China is talking about this new infrastructure concept, which essentially covers everything about 5G, IABCD, right? Um, it, which starts with 5G stations to start the promotion of uh, 5G. And I think the uh, latest Apple iPhone got the boost of it because everyone in China wants to connect new uh, con con connect the new phone with 5G network. And Apple plays into that to make the latest iPhones compatible, right, with 5G network. So that's one. And then the second most interesting, uh, also very, very interesting is about blockchain, right? Uh, a year ago, Chinese president uh, Xi announced that China will put big effort into blockchain investing and the development because in his words, blockchain is a important breakthrough. And this marks the first global leader making a commitment on this much hyped, but not yet fully proved technology. China also started the trial of digital currency a year ago. And this is also the first central bank currency from a major economy. The, the third aspect is actually on the data regulation side. You know, China has started a series of legislature on data protection, both from individual data privacy aspect, as well as from the national data security perspective, right? Uh, comparing to that, the US does not yet have a federal privacy law and the U.S. is also behind in taking antitrust anti action against the big techs, while China has taken actions on the Chinese big tech companies such as Alibaba's and Financial. It's very interesting. Right? You talked mm -hmm. about uh, the data security protection, but I would imagine for data security, it requires global collaboration. It goes beyond the country's border, right? You and my data, right. as we move around, our data goes everywhere with us. And so th this would have to be a global whole ecosystem that's built around data, isn't it? Totally, totally, surely. You know, uh, the, the, the challenge is we just don't have too many case studies on this yet. Uh, because of the borders, for most of the companies, they do not have large operations in both China and the US markets, which means we only have seen very few companies that have global user base. And it, Apple is one. And the, the, there's another Chinese company is the, the, is the only one other than Apple, which is TikTok. And we know TikTok is going through this uh, legal battle with, with the US in terms of you know, how, how it handles the uh, data of U.S. users uh, and how it will be managed going forward. Mm. So what's going to be the fate of uh, TikTok? A lot of people expect that Biden's administration will remove a lot of the uh, Trump actions on Chinese tech companies. And, you know, that's obviously possible. But to me, you know, a lot of the uh, actions took by Trump administration for example, strengthening CFIS regulation, national security review, put Chinese companies on stock ban, you know, put, put some Chinese companies uh, a deal under review, like TikTok, will, will stay. 
will stay. So uh, we will stay. We'll stay. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll actually come come to terms with the TikTok situation, and and the case will be settled. Uh, but it will not be uh, uh, disappear. It will not be disappearing. Do you think uh, TikTok will be uh, forced to be sold to U.S. companies again? Well, that's what the executive order of Trump administration, right? Uh, so unless the Supreme Court put a, a official end to the, to the executive order coming from the Trump administration, that executive order will still be effective, right? Mm. So we'll see some developments in the next two weeks there, I guess. Uh, you yeah. mentioned about Ange Group. How will yeah. Ange Group end through this whole saga? The, the whole saga? Yeah, I, I think the Chinese central bank governor recently commented on at, at the Davos interview, right? So I do not have to repeat that. As the IPO is delayed, Ant is facing increasing regulations uh, from all different areas, right? It, you know, it, its IPO suspension started with regulation of its internet financing platform. Uh, but in 2021, we are also going to see the, uh, the effect, you know, the, the, the new personal data protection law becoming effective. Um, and also antitrust law will also be amended at the People's Congress, uh, which will put more antitrust pressure on the large internet platforms. So as the IPO gets more and more delayed, the company will face more and more regulations. And I think its gigantic valuation will be subject to more and more pressure. So uh, Tencent. Uh, Alibaba uh, gets under under trust uh, antitrust investigations. Of course, uh, Tencent is under watch as well. And one of uh, the investing companies was fined a uh, five hundred thousand RMB ticket. So, of uh, if you were Pony Ma, uh, what do you wake up worrying about right now? Interesting. Obviously, you knew that my 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 last name is also Ma, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so certainly this comment ha is not related, right? Uh, but I think, you know, for, for, for Pony Mar, he should worry about the uh, antitrust issue uh, because in the past, Tencent has not only expanded its user base from WeChat, but also it, it further invested into other platforms, right? If you look at the top five Chinese internet companies. Besides Alibaba, the other three are JD.com, Meituan, and Pindodo. Surprisingly, Tencent is a major shareholder of all of them, right? Uh, so from a antitrust perspective, you know, they, it, they, they, there's a lot to look into, but I think so far, Tencent has kept itself as a passive investor in these companies. Uh, Tencent, Tencent provides its WeChat user traffic to these platforms, which is a big boost to those platforms. It, it has kept uh, the, the business dealings uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a certain distant way. Uh, but I think you know when when the uh, when when the new antitrust law coming up, you know uh, uh, the regulators will take a closer look at the Tencent's ecosystem because it's so powerful. Uh, oh, Huawei. Huawei just announced that it's going to build 5G cards. Boy, this whole EV market in China is absolutely vibrant. What is the advantage for Huawei there? Well, uh, Huawei certainly knows chips better than the other car making people, right? So uh, it, we, we, if you look at the Chinese competitors to Tesla, you know, most of, the, most of them do not have a manufacturing background most of them do not have a chip background, right? Um, so if we really see a decoupling, you know, the global supply chain is, is disrupted, actually Huawei probably has more experience uh, comparing to those internet car companies in terms, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of uh, sourcing components, and in terms of developing chips by itself, right? And don't forget, you know, these uh, uh, the future cars are gonna be inter interconnected, right? Uh, they, uh, they, are, they will also be data intensive. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, data processing, I, I, I'm pretty sure Huawei has some advantage there as well. 
uh, and the latest move is, you know, they, they just uh, appointed uh, their earlier smartphone unit head to be the, uh, the cloud business head. Uh, so, so, so I think, you know, they, they're going to, they're going to be a very big player in uh, internet, internet connected cars market. Mm. So rather than being the supplier to OEV makers in China, Huawei has mm-hmm. opted to, to become a competitor in the race. They could, they could because they, mm. they're coming from a manufacturing DNA, right? Mm. Very interesting. Mm. So do you foresee that Huawei will become the global number one EV maker one day? I, I, I can see, you know, Huawei people are just as colorful as Tesla. So, so they, they can be a very interesting competition. Mm. It'll be absolutely interesting to have yeah. Elon Musk and John Fay to have a dialogue one day. Okay, so you have a IABCD, and I believe that C is a cloud computing. But I want to talk yeah. a little bit, Winston, about uh, quantum computing. The understanding is that uh, China's uh, uh, standing committee members they sat for a whole afternoon all together. I mean, the average age would have been what, about uh, over sixty-five, doubly. <laughs> I mean, they were all sitting for a whole afternoon studying quantum computing uh, in the case know, of China there. You know, my, my undergrad was, um, was, was, was a semiconductor physics, right? Uh, I was an electronic materials major. You know, I certainly studied quantum physics before, uh, but I couldn't claim any expertise on this topic because it, it, it's, it's really, really uh, far ahead, you know, uh, and, and a lot is still in research mode. Uh, but I think you know it's it's really interesting to 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 what you just described, right? It just shows that the uh, the China government is really committed in promoting technology as the main driver of China's future economy, right? You know, a, a couple of years ago, if you recall, uh, relating to artificial intelligence, uh, after the historical match between the, uh, the the the, the, the match of the Go chess game, right? Between the best human player and the AI algorithm developed by Google DeepMind. Uh, of course, you know, AI beats human player three to zero straight, right? After that drastic uh, match, you know, Chinese government also uh, put, a, a, put, put their heads together into a, into a big plan. It came up with a AI development plan calling Chinese AI to be the global leader by 2030, right? And, 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 and at the beginning of the interview, we talked about blockchain. China, China government is the first among the, the major economies to focus on this hyped but not yet proved technology, right? Mm-hmm. And in, to some extent, the quantum computing is something like that. Now you talked about uh, AI. What is the major breakthrough you see in AI in China in 2021, Winston? Excellent question. You know, so far we have seen most of the companies focused on facial recognition. And uh, certainly, you know, China has the big data for that, right? You have 1.4 billion faces, you know, that's, that, that's really good. Um, but if you also looking from the data perspective, uh, China has this, uh, this disadvantage in, ter- in terms of lack of diversity in the data, right? You have 1.4 billion Chinese faces, but uh, you know, you, you just don't have that uh, global data. Global data. Uh, so I think you know, going forward, uh, with you know, in the context of decoupling, in the context of the tech war, uh, it, it's hard for Chinese companies to get global data easily, as we have seen in the case of TikTok. Right? It's it's a it's a rare company that has has uh, more than 100 million users in both China and the U.S. And you can see what is going through right now, right? Uh, so I think the uh, the challenge uh, and opportunity for for China side is, you know, the, the the Chinese AI startups may be forced to focus more on the algorithm, uh, on, on the um, on the programming side of research, instead of merely taking advantage of a, a large amount of data. Well, thank you so much, Winston. Uh, we have a lot to look forward to in 2021. And certainly uh, new uh, books are coming out uh, by you, The Digital War and yeah. the China's uh, Mobile Economy. And good luck with uh, the book tours.